Okay, hello everyone, uh, welcome back. And today we are going to do another example of bus relocalization and a rather important one at that. Uh, that's called P completion. So let P a prime number. Uh, we say, so we let actually, I already mentioned this guy, but we let S mod P to be the cofiber of the multiplication by P map. Yeah. Um, and uh, as I already said, but let me reiterate the warning, S mod P is, uh, sorry, the homotopy groups of S mod P are not P torsion, but they are P square torsion. And in fact, it's going to be in the next exercise sheet to prove that they are P square torsion. It's not hard, really. If you play with it a little bit, you do the only possible thing you can do and you'll see that it, it follows. And it is interesting that you cannot prove that it's P-Torsion. Uh, in fact, it's false, uh, which is maybe not what you would expect, <laughs> but okay. So, okay, let me define. And also similarly, we take X mod P is X tensor S mod P, that is the cofiber of the multiplication by P map from X to X as usual. So we define a spectrum X is P complete if it is S mod P local. We write X completed at P for L S mod P X. Okay, that's a definition. Uh, we know that P completion exists and everything else, but let's, I mean, why are we calling it P completion? Uh, so our first step is to justify this name and maybe find a formula for the P completion. And uh, okay, in order to do so, I'll need this guy. Here. So S mod P infinity is the cofiber of the map from S to S1 over P. Okay, and why are we calling it like this? Well, okay, first of all, recall S1 over P is the co-limit of multiplication by P map. Right? And so this cofiber is S mod P infinity, where we can take the, the, the cofiber, the, this map from S is, you can think of the co-limit of the, actually let me move it a little down. We have S, we can think of it as the co-limit of the identity. That's a very silly way of, of thinking about it, but this makes us, allows us to write this commutative diagram. So we can take the cofiber pointwise and we see that the S mod P infinity is the co-limit of this guy with the mapper multiplication by P. And so in particular, it's integral homology is the co-limit of this map, Z mod P multiplication by P goes to P square, multiplication by P goes to P cube, et cetera, which is what's sometimes called Z mod P infinity. And it's also equivalent to Z one over P over Z, of course. Okay, so, uh, sorry, that's in degree zero and zero otherwise for the same reasons. Okay, so that's still a Moore spectrum. So it has homology concentrated only in degree zero. And it is Moore spectrum of this infinite P torsion group. 
Sometimes people call these, I guess, the P torus. You can also, another way of realizing these is QP mod ZP. Which I'll let, I guess, people uh, try to prove on their own. I feel that the relationship with, uh, with uh, piadic numbers is not a complete coincidence. It is, I will, as we will see, it is relevant. Before the end of this lecture, the Adels actually will show up. So, uh, okay. Okay, is this definition clear? Because now I will show you a theorem that will give you an explicit formula for the p-completion. So for every x spectrum, there exists a natural equivalence of the p-completion of x with the mapping spectrum from the desuspension of s mod p infinity into x. And OK, so uh, why am I saying that this justifies the name p-completion? Well, let me then use a corollary. Uh, corollary, uh, the p-completion is the limit over n of x mod p to the n, which hopefully you will now uh, agree that it deserves the name p-completion. So let me first prove the corollary. But both the theorem and the corollary are actually quite easy, but let me first do this one. OK, is the idea clear so far? Yeah, OK, good. So, OK, so what is maps sigma inverse s mod p infinity of x? Well, that's the same thing as maps from the co-limit over n of sigma inverse s mod p to the n x. OK, that's just what we see. And we can move the co-limit outside. So that's good so far. And uh, well, now I claim that this guy is exactly x mod p to the n with the obvious maps. And this will conclude our proof. So how does this work? Well, sigma inverse of s mod p to the n is the fiber of s multiplication p to the n because sigma mod p to the n is the cofiber by definition. And in spectra, the fiber is the desuspension of the cofiber. Let me write it maybe. This follows from stability. Uh, again, because you have a, a square, it's a pusher, it's a pullback. Or if you want, maybe the cofiber is the suspension of the fiber, same thing really. And so maps from n into x is the cofiber of maps from s to x, p to the n maps from s to x. And that's exactly x mod p to the n. And then you actually have to check the transition maps are the one I promised you, but uh, well, the, the transition maps here are induced on fiber. Uh, by the square. So here we have, well, let me put it vertically. This guy whose fiber is the suspension of S mod P to the N. Here we have multiplication by S plus one. And you basically here, if you look at the definition, that's essentially what this is coming from. And then you look at what this is and this is exactly the projection from mod P to the N. 
So, so the projection, so the map x mod p to the n plus one to x mod p to the n is the map induced on cofiber. Induced cofibers by uh, p, which is exactly uh, the, the canonical projection map if you look at what it does. Think about the case Z if, if you want to convince yourself. In particular, if you take the, the fibers pointwise, you see that, and this is going to be important, actually. So let me remark, actually, let me put as a separate remark. We have a, a fiber sequence. X mod P goes to X mod P to the N plus one goes to x mod p to the n. And this is actually the map multiplication by p to the n. Uh, we are not going to use it right now, but it's going to be relevant later. So let me remark it. OK, this was actually just a playing games with the definition. This was really, really a formal argument, this corollary. Uh, you just, you know, unwrap the definition of S mod P infinity and you see that what I wrote is exactly that limit. So let me go back to the statement here. And I'm going to give you all the details here in class, but I think this is also one thing that it's a lot clearer if you try to, to write it down on your own. Uh, because there are all these checks that the diagrams actually are what I'm claiming to be an exciter. And it's very easy to assert it, but it's useful to convince yourself that it's, I, I'm not cheating. Anymore. OK, so let's prove the theorem now. I hope I, this justifies at least at first any p completion. We'll see more stuff that, that connects this with p completion of a billion groups. So uh, these should of the theorem. So you see that this name is actually very well. Could I have a question? Sure. Uh, the, it's about the statement and it's pretty minor. I was wondering, is there some particular reason why we fix X and then say we have a natural equivalence? No, 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 I just- Okay, so this is just an equivalence of functors, say. Okay. Yeah, in fact, actually this theorem okay. that I said is not even, it's not even precise. What I, pre what I actually should say is that the map from X to here that's induced from this map, that's the boundary map in the cofiber sequence, is a p completion map. Okay. Actually, I should have stated like that. Okay, thanks. That clears. That's that's clear. It tells you exactly how this is a p completion. So proof of theorem. So remember, we have these this fiber sequence here. So we get a boundary map. Uh, Sorry. Like this. I'm writing sigma minus one instead of loops. Uh, there, as I said, I'm going to use them pretty much interchangeably. I think that in the literature I've read, they always use sigma minus one in this context. And so that's why I'm, I'm using it just out of habit. But of course, it matters nothing. OK, so we have a map. And I'm going to claim that X, which is maps from S to X, mapping to map to X is a P completion map. So remember, this uh, comes in two, in two steps. The first step is to prove that this map is indeed an, uh, uh, um, an S mod B equ uh, equivalence. And then the other is that the target is S mod B local. So let's prove first this map is an is a S mod B equivalence. 
that is the cofiber, which is maps S1 over P into X is S mod P acyclic. Uh, okay, maybe I should have mentioned it before, but of course, A, A is S mod P acyclic. If and only if A mod P is zero, that's just by definition, which is if and only if P from A to A is an equivalence, i.e. A is S one over P local. I should definitely have remarked this earlier because we're going to use it. And, uh, and maps S one over P X is S one over P local uh, because you can act on P on the source of these maps and well, there it is an equivalence. So this was easy. And to prove that the target is S mod P local, so the next step is to prove this guy. And yeah, there are a bunch of ways. We could actually use the description we said earlier for, for this object, but I'm going to do a slightly different thing. So let A, S mod P acyclic. And we need to prove that maps from A to this guy is zero. That's what we need to prove. That's what it means to be local. Maybe I'm going fast, actually. Let me pause for one second. Uh, is the proof of this, of this step one clear? OK. It's clear the strategy for step two now. We need to prove this thing. And well, we have sigma inverse s mod p infinity tensor a comma x. And we need to prove that this guy is 0. And so we'll prove that S mod P infinity tensor A is zero. And that will actually conclude our proof. But that's easy because remember, this is the co-limit over N of S mod P to the N tensor A. Remember the tensor product commutes with co-limits so I can bring it inside. So it's enough to prove that S mod P to the N tensor A, that is A mod P to the N, is zero. So far, no harm, no foul. But A is S mod P acyclic. This implies P is an equivalence. And well, this implies P to the N is an equivalence, of course, since that's, that's just P done N times. So this is very formal. Uh, uh, but nonetheless, is it's nice. Yeah. And in fact, one thing I would like to stress here is that P completion is very, very, very explicit, a very, very explicit object. And we will see more. In fact, I'll show you that we can actually compute all the homotopy groups of a p-completion, well, in terms of the homotopy groups of the original guy, which is our next goal. OK, is this, uh, is this clear? So let me, actually, let me put a, re a different remark that's going to be very useful. And that follows from this from this statement. 
So let X be a spectrum such that its rationalization is trivial and it's P, sorry, and X mod P is trivial for every P, then X is zero. That's going to be useful later. Well, that what this is easy. This is well, uh, P is an equivalence for every P. This means that X is rational, but its rationalization is trivial. So P completion and rationalization are enough to detect all that we want on spectra. And we will use it later. And in fact, I will show you. In fact, we will show X can be reconstructed from XQ and its P completion. Uh, you need an additional piece of glue in data, but we will see a precise statement later. So in fact, often when people are going to describe a spectrum, what they're going to give you, they're going to give you the rationalization, its P completion, and maybe a few words about the gluing data, and they'll call it uh, good enough. Uh, because uh, you can actually rebuild it. And these objects are actually simpler, where we've seen that XQ is essentially the same as giving you its, its rational homology. If you give if you give the rational homology of the spectrum, you know its rationalization. There's literally no other data. Uh, yeah, maybe I should have mentioned that pi star xq is the same thing as hq star x, of course, by definition of hq star. So let me put this. Here. So if I give you the rational homology is literally the same as giving you this spectrum. And the P completion is harder to describe, but we will see an example later. Okay, questions so far? Good. Our, our example, uh, our next goal now is to describe the homotopy groups of uh, the P completion. And it turns out there is something sort of like an, an uh, universal coefficient theorem for them. So let X be a spectrum, then there exists a canonical, and I mean functorial, if you want, a short exact sequence. So here I'm putting the homotopy groups of the P completion in the middle. And um, let me copy this correctly, yes. Uh, the target, you get this term that's often zero, but not always, unfortunately, which is some sort of infinite torsion and X, and the shift. And the major contribution is X of Z mod P infinity pi star X. And okay. I should say that if A is an abelian group, X Z mod P infinity A is called the derived P completion of A. And we will see later 
the, the relationship with the ordinary peak completion. Essentially, it is the same as the ordinary peak completion, except when your, your uh, abelian group has a lot of p-torsion. And uh, when they disagree, actually, the derived peak completion is the one that has the good properties you would like it to have. For example, but we will see, this is always right exact, a right exact functor. Oh, and uh, sorry, I should say it's called the derived p completion because it's literally the derived functor of the p completion. The zero is the right functor of the p completion. That is, you can compute it by taking a projective resolution of A, p completing the resolution and taking the zero homology of that thing. That actually I could give it, give it as an exercise. Thanks. Let me see right as an exercise. Show that the derived p completion is the zeroth left to the right functor of ordinary p completion. Um, I think you need some of the stuff we're going to say later, actually, to prove this. But that, that justifies the name, hopefully. OK. But uh, that's enough. We're going to study the RFP completion later. Right now, let's try to prove this proposition. And to prove the idea is there is a resolution of Z mod P infinity that's worked like this. Sum for n greater or equal than one Z times EN. Sum equal than one Z times EN prime. Where this map sends EN to, uh, I guess, if you think of these as Z1 over PN mod Z, you send this to 1 over PN. If you want, you send it to the generator of Z mod PN to the N inside Z mod P infinity. And this map sends uh, EN prime to, uh, hold on, which one I want? Um, yeah, I want the one p m plus one minus e n. I want this one. Yeah. And the idea is let's construct a spectral version of that. to construct a spectral version that is a fiber that is a fiber sequence giving the previous uh, short exact sequence in integral homology. So if you apply integral homology, you get uh, 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 you get exactly a short exact sequence with those terms and then claiming like constructors. Okay, so let's try to do standard argument. So let me first tell you how the existence of this spectral lift to this resolution gives you the, um, the, the sequence I, I wrote. Yes, the Schrodinger sequence I wrote. Assuming we have this, have that. we can build a 
we can, sorry, not build, we can apply map sigma inverse shift x to the above fiber sequence. And you get a fiber sequence of the form Yeah, sorry, no. Plus uh, sigma x. Am I doing this right? Yeah, I'm doing this right. That's I'm using that maps of direct sums is just a product of maps. where this map is actually taking the nth factor through to the product of the nth and n plus one factor uh, with the map p minus one. Because that was how this was built. We can look Uh, the long exact sequence in homotopy now. So what do we get? We get, so this remember was, uh, and let me apply pi star plus one actually, so I get the right shifts here. Plus one. So now we need to understand kernel and co-kernel. Uh, so now the goal is to understand kernel and co-kernel of this star map. Okay, um, we good so far? Uh, but the point is that this star map is exactly the map induced in home. Uh, it's a map induced in home. By, by this map here in the resolution. Of Z mod P infinity. Uh, because of how we constructed the thing. And so it's kernel is home Z mod P infinity pi star of X and it's co-kernel is X Z P infinity pi star of X by definition of home and text. Yeah, by definition of X, really. 
home is it's not by definition of home, of course, but uh, it's a, the, the usual property. When you have a, a resolution, you can look at the longest that sequence on home and X. And deduce exactly what you want. Okay. Okay. So this basically concludes the proof. Just let me give you a couple of words on how we construct this spectral lift. And the point is that this resolution of ZP, so lift, note that the resolution of Z mod P infinity is obtained as a co-limit of resolutions of Z mod P to the N. No, sorry, that's not. It is obtained as a co-limit of the following short exact sequences. Well, okay, let me write this diagram and then You'll, you'll see what I mean. Uh, this map was the minus one P. No, sorry, this map is the P comma one. So this has to be one zero, yes. One, one, zero, but sorry. Well, okay, this is just the inclusion of the first two factors. Let me not write the matrix for that one, but let me write the matrix for this one, um, which is now minus one P, minus one P, zero, 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 zero. No, no, no zeros here. This Z and this P square P one. This is multiplication by P. And what I mean here is that if you take the co-limit of this diagram and let me copy the first one and you put the co-limit here you get the sum for n greater or equal than one of z going to the sum for n greater or equal than zero of z going to z p one over, one over p. And these are still the resolutions. This is the standard projective resolution, sorry. And so if you take the cofiber of this map, sorry, the co-kernel, and then you get the resolution I promised you. And the point is that this construction I wrote with Z, you can do it with the sphere. Don't make me rewrite it, but you can replace Z with S here and nothing changes. And you get the resolution. And since the construction is the same, uh, it, one gets sense to the other, other but when, by applying uh, homology. Question? Yes. So this basically tells you that 
whenever you have such a diagram of abelian groups, you could make a spectral version? Yes, turns out that you can make a spectral, this is a special case of the fact that you can take, so if you have a, a length one projective, sorry, free resolution of an abelian group, you can always lift it to a spectral version of that. So this is, you would think that that would imply that more spectra are are factorial, but in fact, no, because projective resolutions, as we unfortunately know, are not factorial. Uh, but uh, it comes really, really close. The fact Wait, that, then I'm confused. Why are projective resolutions not factorial? I mean, they are certainly not unique, but you could lift maps somehow. Yeah, so what did they mean with that? I guess that the problem is that the lift, uh, the lift of maps from from Z to endomorphisms of the sphere is not factorial. Uh, essentially, you have a map, right, from the mapping space from S to S into Z, which is in fact the discretization. This is a, a this is the space QS node that I talked some time ago, and this is just con collapsing its connecting component. And this map is subjective, of course. But I guess my point is that you cannot find a section that respects the infinity space structure of the thing. I guess that that's the issue of functoriality. Yeah. OK. I'll have to think a little bit about it. Uh, but you also need, sorry, you need a section as an infinity ring, actually, because you also need it to preserve composition, but okay. Anyway, mm -hmm. the point is that you can do it, you can do it for the maps pointwise. In fact, you can show, this shows that you have, so if I denote for a second by SA and SB the corresponding Moore spectra, this, this argument actually will show you that this map is surjective. But it has a kernel. Uh, this is going to be an exercise, so I'm not going to, to unwrap all the definitions. Uh, this, map is, this map is subjective, so you can lift every map of, of Moore spectra, of Oblivion groups of map of Moore spectra. But the problem of functoriality is that there is a kernel here. And this sequence, sequence is unfortunately not split, so you cannot do. Okay. What you would like to do. Uh, you cannot just choose a lift of it and, and hope that it gives you a functor. Does it make sense? Right. Yeah, it does and it helps a bit, but sorry, just one follow up question. So it seems that we do have some kind of section from Z to map from sphere to sphere because this is what we do. I mean, we certainly can map multiplication by P. Yeah, the, I guess I am being a bit imprecise here, uh, there is a section. I mean, the multiplication by P is defined as any point uh, lifted here. The point is that this, this map does not respect, uh, what do I want to say? Okay, let me not try to improvise this actually because it's a very subtle point and uh, uh, I, I'm bound to say something false here, and it's going to confuse everyone else, everyone uh, more. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that there is some subtlety here uh, with the fact that this this map is is an equivalence of pi node, but it's not an equivalence of spaces, and this is sort of where the problem is. But yeah. And that's the point. Sometimes when you wrote the diagram, you actually have to choose the homotopies. And I'll confess, I have been a bit sloppy with these diagrams here, for example. Where is it? There was some diagram earlier. Yeah, for example, this one. The point is that there is always a canonical homotopic to choose in each of the diagrams. I, I, I put it in front of you. And there is always quite easy. But you can also, if you're not careful, you can very easily write diagrams where the, there is a choice of homotopy, and that will will make your life complicated. 
So sorry for being sloppy. I never said anything false. For example, in this case, it's quite clear. You have the identity homotopy here. Yeah. P composed with one and two P composed with one has an identity homotopy and also P square here, et cetera. You have canonical choices here. Uh, but if you are not careful, you will write diagrams that do not have canonical choices of homotopies. And in fact, I secretly did it here. Uh, in the sense that these diagrams, you can always choose homotopies to put here when you put the sphere, but there are no, not really canonical choices. Uh, but you don't care for the purposes of this argument, or you just need to construct whichever lift. And you don't care that the lift is, is particularly canonical. I don't know if that helps. It is definitely yeah, a I think it does. So the point is that you can always choose homotopies, but they are not canonical. Yeah. OK, thanks. Okay, so actually let me copy this statement that we just proven here down because now we want, I want to. I want to uh, elaborate a little bit on this piece. I want to say at least why this ought to be called a p-completion. this thing would be, would be called the p-completion. Uh, and uh, well, okay, let me recall what the lim1 functor is because I'm going to need it in a statement. I don't know if you've ever seen it or not, but suppose you have a tower like this, a billion groups. And uh, let me choose this, yeah, P0, P1, P2, etc. cetera. Uh, then we have a left exact sequence, zero, the limit over a n goes to the product, goes to the product where this map here is sending a n to a n minus p a n plus one. So this is just saying that the limit is this, the collection of a n's such that a n is equal to p n a n plus one. And the co-kernel of this map is called lim1 an um, and it it measures something about how complete is the filtration on the limit given by the kernel of the projection maps it's not very important but it's related to the completeness of cur lim a n to a n. You, if you look at it carefully, you can see it as a as a space of Cauchy sequences, modulo space of convergence sequences, something like that. So it is related to this. I thought it's not very important. All that I care about these is that uh, if all p n's uh, surjective lima one a n is zero, and these I'll let you as a as an exercise. That is this this star map that I wrote is is surjective if all p n's are surjective. Ooh, sorry, this is p n. And I mean intuitively you can think of it. You can all, if if p n is surjective, you can always adjust the nth term by picking something upstairs. So. In fact, there is an if and only if condition that's called the mid tech left there condition that is weaker than all the PNs subjective, but we won't need this kind of refined analysis here. Okay, and so 
let me state this lemma now. So let A be an abelian group. Then there exists a short exact sequence, which goes as first a Limon term, then goes to the derived P completion, and then goes to the ordinary P completion. So you can see that the only difference between the derived P completion and the ordinary P completion is, uh, is uh, the, the, the P torsion. This is also just the P torsion in, in A. P to the N torsion. So for example, IE, if A has, sorry, not IE. So that therefore, it's not an IE. If A has bounded P torsion, P power torsion, IE, A to P to the N is equal to A P to the N plus one equal, et cetera, for some N. So all the P torsion at some point stabilizes. There is there aren't elements of sufficiently big P torsion. The derived P completion coincides with the ordinary P completion. So this derived P completion is really, really very close to the ordinary P completion. And if you want an example, A where uh, P torsion, where, where the derived P completion is different from ordinary P completion, you can take something particularly crappy like this sum here that has bigger and bigger P torsion. I can leave you as an exercise to, to compute this Limon term and see that it actually is non zero. But this is, yeah. I would argue that when those two differ, the one you really want typically is this. You can see this, for example. If you've read some of the perfectoid spaces papers by Peter Schultz recently, I don't know if anyone is interested in arithmetic geometry, but if you do, often his hypotheses on the rings are not that the, the ring is P complete, but it is derived P complete. Because that allows you more flexibility in presence of P torsion. Should I prove this lemma? Yeah, let me just give you a, a sketch. We use a variant of the resolution we had before. There exists a short exact sequence, zero, sum over n z mod p to the n going to sum over n mod z p to the n goes to z p infinity where the maps here send a to a n to a n minus p a n plus one you can verify that this is indeed an exact sequence and then you you look at the long exact sequence for home blank A and use that uh, X Z mod P to the N A 
is equivalent to a mod p to the n, which uh, it's, I think, the first example they show you of X groups. And if not, I mean, okay, you can try to compute it using a projective resolution of z mod p to the n, if you've never seen that. And okay, and I, I don't think I want to give more details than this. They're all in the notes, which are online, by the way. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, hopefully the strategy is clear. You construct the short exact sequence, you look at the long exact sequence, and it turns out that you can sandwich the X between a certain kernel and a certain co-kernel, and the kernel is that limit, and the co-kernel is that lim1, because limit and lim1 are defined as a kernel and a co-kernel after all. OK. And this almost ends our digression on the right to completion. Uh, there is another thing I would like to say, perhaps. Let me put a lemma again. I don't know. There are complete proofs in the notes. I'm not sure if I should do the proofs here in the interest of time, but OK. No, actually, first I need a definition. A abelian group is derived P complete if the map yeah, from A to its derived P completion, that's the boundary homomorphism in, in, the, in the long sequence in X that coming from the definition of Z mod P infinity is an isomorphism. And as a lemma, let me just say, so if A is derived P complete, then home from Z mod P infinity A is zero. Uh, and as a corollary, which is the thing I actually care about, uh, E spectrum is P complete if and only if pi star of E is derived P complete. That's because now we have a formula for the homotopy groups of the P completion. And you can see that uh, it, from that lemma, this corollary follows immediately. So that's what I meant when I say that P completion for a spectrum is some kind of completeness condition on the homotopy groups. Which is very surprising, actually. It's not a trivial statement. This lemma is true, but every time I, I see it, it's, I'm always a bit surprised by it. Uh, because uh, it feels like it should be wrong. Uh, but it is true. Uh, so let me do the proof of the lemma. Maybe. Yeah, I think I have time to do that and the fractal square. Uh, Okay. So the proof of the lemma, so let's write, so we have uh, this guy here, over P, Z mod P infinity goes to zero. Uh, and look at the long exact sequence in hom blank A. So what do we have? We have zero goes to hom Z mod P infinity into A, which is the piece that we want to kill, going to hum Z one over P A, goes into A, goes into the act, the, the, the derived P completion. This goes to uh, 
x z one over p a this goes to zero that's going x to z which is zero and so we know that this map is an isomorphism so this implies that for home z p infinity a is equivalent to z one over p a in particular p acts invertibly on home z mod p infinity a because it has x invertibly on the other guy but then home z p infinity a is equivalent to the limit of the multiplication by p maps And that's exactly home of z p infinity p inverse a. And then, okay, I guess you need a quick argument for that, but you can believe me, using the fact that z mod p infinity is the co-limit of, I mean, every element in z mod p infinity is p torsion. And so that's zero, magic. Know that this is not an if and only if, so you also need the vanishing of this guy if you want to be completion. And I guess you need another lemma that I'm not going to prove actually to get this corollary that the derived p completion of an abelian group is derived p complete. That is, but I'm not going to prove it because I think we are going far aside but the proof is not hard it's the same kind of ideas you show that uh, if you are you know, the, the, the r home from z1 over p into the p complete you have to show that these two guys are zero when a is replaced by its derived p completion and well that that's not hard. I'm going to, to skip over that part, so because this corollary is really what I wanted to to state. Okay, so this sort of ends the story of the p-completion, in the sense that we are not going to be able to say anything more about the p-completion. Uh, but I want to use the p-completion to do some stuff. In fact, I want to respect to, 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 to uh, honor my promise before to tell you how you construct a spectrum from its p-completions and its rationalization. Are there questions before I, I move back to that? No. Okay. Uh, let me draw a line. And let me write the following theorem, which is one of two theorems. I think I'm going to call it Piadic arithmetic fracture. Arithmetic fracture square. It's usually called the arithmetic fracture square, but since the other square I'm going to write down is also called, called the arithmetic fracture square, I'm going to add a Piadic just to distinguish them. So let x be a spectrum, then the following square is uh, Cartesian. So I put x here and I go down to x with p inverted and I can go here to its p completion, but I need Conditional piece, and that's p completion with p inverted. And this map here is just the map on the top line 
with P inverted. So I can build X out of a piece that's p adic and a piece that's away from P. And by the way, maybe I should know that this sometimes is also called XQP. Because for example, when you plug X equals HZ, you can see that you get exactly HQP there. And also, yeah, the P completion, sometimes it's called XZP, although I don't like this notation very much. Okay. Uh, it, is this uh, statement clear? Okay. So proof, and the proof is going to surprise you. So let F be the fiber of the map from X to the, this pullback. It's what's called the total fiber of the square, the fiber of the map from the top left corner to the pullback of the rest. And we want to prove that F is zero. Note that F with P inverted is zero. Because when you invert P, you just get a square. Inverting P is an exact factor, so you can go inside everything and you get a square with uh, two uh, with two arrows, two parallel arrows that are equivalences, the two vertical parallel arrows. Not a very deep observation, but note also that F mod P is zero since we have actually let me X mod P going to X with P inverted mod P, and this is zero going to X mod P, and that's an equivalence because the P completion map is an S mod P equivalence. And then finally, downstairs, you get this. Well, that's also an equivalence for zero goes to zero is an equivalence, maybe for more stupid reasons, but it is nonetheless an equivalence. Is Cartesian. But then this implies that F is zero. The end. Yeah, feels almost like cheating, doesn't it? Uh, but it's not. It's a perfectly rigorous and complete proof. Okay. Questions about this proof? We're going to see a very similar one uh, in a minute. Maybe just stupid, but why don't we also need to check that the cofiber of this map is zero? Oh, uh, because it's not like in a billion groups. The cofiber is just a suspension of the fiber. A map of spectra is an equivalence even only if the fiber is zero, even only if the cofiber is zero. That's the beauty of stability. It makes everything very, very easy. And in fact, there is a similar theorem for abelian groups if you try to prove it. Uh, you have to use the right P completion, of course, but it's not literally true as, as such for exactly this reason. It's true in, in, in some conditions, but there, there, there is literally the same theorem for the derived category of abelian groups, though, because when you're stable, you, you also always have these nice statements. Uh, 
um, the upper horizontal arrow of the of the last Cartesian square uh, to see that this is an equivalence. I check on homotopy groups. No, which no, 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 no. That's this is an equivalence if and only if the map X to XP is an S mod P equivalence, because that's literally what being an S mod P equivalence means. It means it's an equivalence after you tensor it with ah, an S -mod P. okay, okay. Yeah, there. and that's an S mod P equivalence by definition of P completion. Because I mean, it's an S mod P equivalence to an S mod P local target. So everything here is true basically by definition. What's making this proof work is this tricky thing where uh, S mod P acyclic things are the same thing as S1 over P local things. That's exactly what's, what's making the proof work. In fact, it's true there is a more general statement when you have a two bounds free localizations that satisfy similar conditions, you get such a fracture square. And in fact, you will see another example uh, at this point, I think next time of this kind of phenomenon. Okay. Just one small question. Yes. So how do we really need the exactness of inverting P? I mean, because you need it to commute with pullbacks. Otherwise you cannot move the inverting one over P inside right. the factors of the pullback. And the same thing for, for mod Ps. Uh, tensoring with S mod P is exact. But tensoring with everything is exact in spectra, so. Okay, that, thanks. That's not a problem. Okay, okay. Now this is Piadic, as I said, this is working one prime at a time. And I want to finish today by explaining how you remove this dependence on the prime, how you work with all primes at the same time. So let me give you a definition. X spectrum is profinite complete, profinitely complete, I guess. If it is local for S mod P for all primes. This means essentially that X inverts all mod P equivalences for all P's. So if you have a map that's, an, uh, sorry, I said it wrong. Inverts the maps that are mod P equivalences for all P. So if you have a map that's uh, a mod P equivalence for each P, then mapping that map into X gives you an equivalence. And this is the right notion of profinite completion. So proposition now, the map X goes this is a profinite completion. So in fact, profinite completion is not really something new. And actually the proof of this is easy, very, very easy. And you should think by the way of this proof as sort of the way in which you take the profinite completion of Z and it turns out to just be a product of ZP for all Ps. In fact, that is a specific example of these when you put HZ in the place of X. I don't know if you've seen this before, the profinite completion of Z this guy no maybe not okay never mind uh, i yeah this part is probably more familiar if you've seen some some of these number theoretic kind of things uh, but okay uh, but this proof is easy so first of all again we need to prove this is uh, profinite complete because uh, each factor is profinite complete. Uh, and 
you know, local e local spectra are closed on the limits. So it's enough to check its factor, but then if A is S mod B a cyclic, in particular, it's S mod B a cyclic. And so maps from A to XP is zero. So the target is undoubtedly local, profinitely local, profinitely complete, sorry. And now you just need to check that this map is an equivalence. And let's see how much way I did. Okay, and now we're going to use uh, the, the criterion that uh, I, I mentioned earlier. You need to show, no, sorry, no, that's not the criterion. You need to show that this map is an um, S mod Q equivalence for every Q. That's the same thing as being an equivalence for the direct sum. I.e. that this map from X mod Q to product over P. Well, okay, the product is an exact functor, so I can bring it inside as an equivalence. But how does this work? Well, so here we have two factors. We have this guy and the product for all primes not Q. Q. And these we know to be X mod Q by definition of, of Q completion. So we better hope uh, that the, the rest is zero. Uh, well, that's first of all, note that since completion is an exact functor, I can bring this inside. And we just need to show that P acts invertibly on X mod Q. But that's because Pi star of X mod Q is Q square torsion, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, so multiplication by P, which is a prime different from Q, is indeed an equivalence, an isomorphism. And that ends the proof. As you see, it's a lot easier to prove this fact and to prove a relevant fact for abelian groups because everything we have inside is exact. So we can just move stuff inside happily. And the only price we pay for the all this freedom is that we have to replace a Q by a Q square here, which changes nothing. Uh, it's just a pretty good deal in my opinion, but you know, your millage may vary. Okay, is this proof clear? Okay, this proof is clear. Let me finish with the following theorem, which is what I'm going to call the arithmetic fracture square. Which is the following. Let X be a spectrum. Uh, then the following square is Cartesian. So here we have the profinite completion, which we just learned is given by this formula. And here we can take rational spectra. And here, well, we need some gluing data. And that's just the rationalization of the profinite completion. This, by the way, uh, I don't know if there is a standard notation for it, but this is called the adelic part. Because it's related to the group of finite adels, which is exactly this guy here.
And actually, I'm supposed to know where the accent goes. Uh, Adele, yeah, that's correct. It does change the pronunciation, but if you don't speak French, you probably don't care about the accent. And in fact, most people never write it. But yeah. Anyway, this, this is the arithmetic fracture, square, arithmetic fracture square. So you recover x from all its p completions and its rational things, plus a gluing data, which is essentially the datum of this arrow here. But the, note that this arrow here is just a map of rational spectra, and the map of rational spectra is determined by what it does on homotopy groups. So it's really, really a very explicit set of data if you can describe this guy, which is hard. But we will discuss this more next, uh, next Monday about what you can say about understanding the p completion. But that's also why actually most of stable homotopy theory concentrates on understanding the category of uh, p complete spectra. Because on some level, that's all you, you need to care about. You can always go back and reconstruct everything using this fracture square. Okay, is this statement clear? Okay, let me say you the proof. And the proof is not going to surprise you because it's exactly the same proof as before. Uh, so you take F fiber of, oh, sorry, X goes to XQ. fiber of this, and we, we want to show fq is trivial and f mod p is trivial for every p. And these will, uh, will conclude our argument. And as before, we just rationalize this square. So the Q part comes from this, and the F mod P part comes from this. Hmm. Well, okay. We have seen that this is a profinite completion, so this is an equivalence, and again, This concludes the proof. So that's a very, very explicit reduction of, uh, of a spectrum to a rational data and a p-complete data for every p. And the rational data, as we have seen, is like very easy. It's literally just compute the homotopy groups and you know everything. Uh, the p-complete data is trickier. And uh, the last example of Bausch field localization, uh, which is less arithmetic in nature, I'm going to tell you the, how you can understand it, uh, 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 understand a little piece of this p-complete data, uh, which, by the way, if you've been to exercise sessions this week, is related to the J homomorphism. Uh, but we will see this on Monday. Um, although, yeah, I won't be able to to prove everything in detail in that case. But since I have, okay, no, instead of blabbering for five minutes, do you have any questions? No, okay. Let me, ooh, ooh no, that's not what you wanted to do. Um, so, let me just say that to understand x complete dot p, the best known strategy is 
is to filter it by simpler pieces. And these pieces are called L E N of X. Sorry for that. L E zero of X is in fact the rationalization. Um, well, okay, I guess in this setting, I really mean the L E N of the P completion. And the next time, LKU of X, which is the first piece on this filtration. Um, and maybe I'll say, well, I cannot define you the higher pieces. Um, unfortunately, there are some significant work, but this is, this goes under the name of chromatic homotopy theory. And I'll at hope at least justify the name next time. Uh, even if it's a very, very, I'm not a super expert of chromatic homotopy theory, I should say. I know, of course, some. Uh, if you want to learn more, there is a, there are lecture notes by Jake Kubluri on chromatic homotopy theory on his webpage that are pretty good. It's a class he gave, I think, in 2012 or something like that, uh, shortly before I started graduate school. And you should have almost all the prerequisites to follow those lectures now, those lecture notes. Um, the only missing part is some facility with spectral sequences, uh, which I might say something in the last couple of lectures of this class, if I have time and otherwise I, I won't, unfortunately. Time being what it is. It's a very fascinating subject. And I'll show you the first baby case, in fact, the, the case that motivate trying to find out these higher ENs. Uh, next time. And then we're going to be done with bus field localizations and maybe to the relief of some of you, we'll start talking about manifolds. Uh, well, okay, no, there is, I guess, another lecture, lecture in which I'll have to explain how duality works, but that's you know, to, to prove versions of Poincaré duality and so on and so forth. Questions? Just one question. So are there some examples of spectra with known P completions, just to keep in mind? Ah, uh, well. That's a vague question. Known is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, uh, of course, I mean, as a super silly example, sorry, that I should have done, HZP is HZP by the formula of homotopy groups I gave you earlier. Uh, uh, no, oh, so, and of course, uh, so if you have a spectrum like, okay, MO, I haven't defined to you yet, but I will uh, next Thursday at this point, uh, it's to completion is MO. Uh, it is to complete actually. Uh, and uh, MO, in general, Tom spectra. So if I present you a spectrum as a Tom spectrum, I think I, I feel satisfied in telling you that we know it, what it is. And Tom spectra in general are pretty easy to manipulate. They're as explicit as spectra go. Uh, so these, all these examples sort of come from it. And then you can recover stuff like Alan McLean spectra as special Tom spectra. So you typically quite happy about it. Um, you want other examples. I don't know, I mean, there are plenty of examples of spectra whose P of which we know all the homotopy groups of the P completion. So for example, in a similar way to HZ, the P completion of KU is, well, ZP when star is even and zero when star is odd. And moreover, KU P can be described in terms of 
arithmetic data. Well, okay, yeah, also I made a mistake. This LQ, this LE1 should have been really L of KU completed at P. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, that was an oversight. E1 is KU completed at P, it's not just KU. Uh, and that's, I guess, as close as we can possibly get to describe a spectrum. Uh, spectra are complicated gadgets uh, with a lot of, of data inside. And what you can hope is I give you some recipe to how to build a spectrum from some independent data, like formal group lows in this case, or in this case, uh, vector bundles that are explicit in some sense. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you ask me, we know, but what does it mean to know? Uh, I guess is my question. Uh, but the point is, yeah, there are some spectra for which we understand. And also we have this, this fact that P completion of the sphere can be, is actually equivalent to the limit of these LEMs of the sphere. And these LENs of the sphere are somehow explicit in the sense that think it can be built as some fixed points of some spectrum EN, which is built out of arithmetic data by the action of a group that comes from the same arithmetic data. In fact, GN is going to be the automorphism of the arithmetic data that build EN. But I'll say maybe a little bit more next time about this. Uh, so in some sense, this is very explicit. I gave you uh, an explicit recipe starting from arithmetic data, data that a priori have nothing to do with homotopy theory, how to build this P completion and how to understand all the layers and etc. Of course, then it comes the question, okay, but what can you tell me about their homotopy groups? And the answer is, well, I can give you a lot of spectral sequences at every step of this construction, you get a new spectral sequence that compute the homotopy groups of the next. Uh, but of course, if you ask me to like explicitly tell you what these spectral sequences are doing, uh, well, who knows? Uh, and we know something in low degrees, of course, but there are, I think for, for P equals two, we know everything up to degree 91-ish or something by very recent work. Uh, so at some point you'll have to question the, the utility of computing higher and higher stems. A stem is, by the way, it's, it's this, the homotopy group of the sphere. It's called the, the, the pi i of s. The P is called the i stem. Uh, higher and higher stems. And I mean, I guess people at first were hoping to see patterns and they saw some patterns that gave rise actually to this nice picture here. Uh, but there aren't that many patterns and we are almost at 100 and we still see basically no patterns beyond what we already saw. And uh, so uh, I guess <laughs> it's a, uh... oh, actually that's not, that's actually not true is you can build out of these plus EM minus one of the sphere. It's an inductive procedure, sorry. I said something false. It's not literally, that's what's called LKM sphere. But again, I'll say something more when we see the n equals one case, which we can see explicitly next time. And the existence of this n equals one case motivates pe motivate people to see, okay, can we find, you know, further layers of this tower? And the answer is yes. So this is probably a very unsatisfying answer to your question, Joachim, but... Uh, I think, I think it's great. Uh, yeah, we, we understand this. In some sense, we understand the structure of this uh, category very well. But both understanding exactly what this, how this guy works is very hard and how to glue these two things together using a fracture square like the one I told you before for the, the arithmetic case is also very hard. It's even harder. That goes under the name transchromatic homotopy theory. And you might have noticed that there was the announcement of a conference here in Regensburg last year in transchromatic homotopy theory. And now you know what that, what that means. Well, not yet, but you have a list of theory. And that's extremely hard, actually. It's not like in the rational case where, okay, I know what happens in the homotopy groups, I win. Uh, here it's, it's significantly harder and there is some significant arithmetic geometry that shows up there ahead. And, uh, but 
we do what we can. This is literally active research now. So. Um, so, so I have a question. If if I have a um, um, like a, a complex in the derived category of abelian groups, or if I have two complexes and and or two elements and the amorphism between them, isn't it enough to check it on um, somehow mod p and tensor q? Yes, you have, in fact, in the derived category of Z, you have a similar fracture square. Yeah, exactly, but it's way easier. I don't have the adelic part, I, I, I just- No, you do have the adelic part. The point is that an equivalence is, so if you have a morphism, it's an equivalence mod B and rationally, then it is an equivalence. Yeah, but I don't have the P completion somehow. You do have the P completion. The point is that you can check that something is an equivalence on the P completion by only by checking its mod B. Ah. Oh because that's what the p-completion does. Uh, okay, okay. But to reconstruct the whole thing, you actually need, you have a, as before, well, here the p-completion and the rationalization are done in the derived category, but, so the p-completion is easier because what you do not have in abelian groups is you don't have these higher chromatic primes that gives you more data. These are actually easy to understand in, in the Z. Okay. Um, but, but like tensoring with Q and taking mod P is somehow a conservative family. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's true also in spectrum. Okay. The only that... difference between DZ and spectra is that the P completion is a lot easier to understand in DZ. Ah, yes. Okay. And and like in the in the um, and somehow in, a, in in motifs like in in, in DMK or this something. Works. Yeah, you still have such a square. I still have such a square. In fact, in every sufficiently nice stable infinity category of such a square, you can check that the proofs work just verbatim. The proof I gave you today. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and something completely unrelated. Some or that. Like it's it's just more philosophical. Do I have something like that? Um, schemes say of finite type over X is is like the category of schemes of finite type over X is is a pullback of schemes over X Q. Like do I also have some kind yes. of fracture square? Yes, I'm not sure if schemes is the right category. Uh, I claim unpreparedness here. Uh, you might need algebraic spaces instead of schemes, oh, okay. but it's essentially FPQC descent. Uh, this in the in the schemes setting is just that this map. Oh, so well, spec. Sorry, ish. What am I doing? This thing to spec Z is. Uh, is an FPQC cover. So that's literally not an FPQC cover, sorry. You have to say something more to that, that involves the adelic part, actually. Because yeah, there yeah. Are some fineness, but you know, something like this is true. Okay. Um, don't make me try to formulate a precise statement, though. So, because in some sense, set P, I mean, should be an infinite, infinitesimal neighborhood around yes, the set mod P's. And so indeed, it should indeed, have... there, there should be actually now with the recent work by, by Schultz and Clausen on condensed mathematics, there should be actually a, a neater way of reformulating this uh, in terms of their analytic spaces, because you really would like to have like periodic analytic spaces over ZP. Ah, I, I see, I see. ZP. That's why schemes should not work. Uh, but you, you, uh, people use formal schemes that embed into periodic analytic spaces, but uh, now it, it... Okay. I mean, this is literally stuff that was announced a few months ago. So uh, there is a, that it's still very rough around the edges, but this should be the right language to, to ask these questions somehow. Okay, okay, cool. I guess one, one precise thing I can say actually that spec ZP disjoint union spec Z one over P to spec C is an FPQC cover.
F, what, what's FPQC again? Um, flat Faithfully flat. Uh, 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 it's the topology generated by Faithfully flat maps and the risky covers. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Hmm. And there is actually an intrinsic characterization of FPQC covers, but it's complicated. And um, uh, you need maps that are faithfully flat and such that every affine in the base is covered by, now is the image of a quasi-compact open in the source. That's, it's not the same thing as saying that the pre-image is quasi-compact, it's slightly different, but okay. There are some subtleties and actually there are a lot of mistakes in the literature about these when people use the wrong definition of FPQC. Uh, uh, because it's so easy to, to, to misremember some detail and getting a different definition. Uh, but uh, anyway. But something like this is true. And I mean, yeah, that you're right. This is sort of the inspiration for this fracture square story. But the fracture yeah, square yeah. story is easier. Yeah, yeah the, this was really easy now. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> Other questions? No? Okay, I'll stop the recording then.